Tafsir al Razi, which I'm not uh, recommending that, uh, that anybody tries to read independently. Uh, al Razi was from the biggest of the Mutakalimi, the people of Ahlul Kalam. But the point here is even them, even the Asha'ira, even them, they did not say that the Shirk of Quraysh was as was described by the claimant. And that's why it's very important for us also to understand. Does it mean that every mushrik on earth believes the same thing? La. And this is the point that I think that is very important for us to understand, right? Just like we have Muslims at different levels of Islam and Iman and Ihsan, the mushrikeen are also on a very broad spectrum. So some of them may believe that what they're worshiping brings them benefit and harm, and others don't. And it's all still shirk if they're doing acts of, of taqarru, if they're doing acts of devotion. Al-Razi in his tafsir, uh, in explaining the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, قُلْ مَنْ يَرْزُقُكُمْ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ وَالْأَرْضِ أَمَّنْ يَمْلِكُ السَّمَعَ وَالْأَبَصَارِ وَمَنْ يُخْرِجُ الْحَيَّ مِنَ الْمَيِّتِ وَيُخْرِجُ الْمَيِّتَ مِنَ الْحَيِّ وَمَنْ يُدَبِّرُ الْأَمَرِ فَسَيَكُونُونَ اللَّهِ فَقُلْ أَفَلَا تَتَّقُونَ uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling the Prophet alayhi salatu wa to say to who? To Quraysh. Say to them, who provides for you from heaven and earth? Or who controls, or from the skies and the earth? Or who controls hearing and sight? And brings the living out of the dead? And brings the dead out of the living? And who arranges every affair, every matter? They will say, Allah. They will say Allah. So then say to them, will you not have taqwa? Will you not fear? Al-Razi says, ثُمَّ بَيْنَ تَعَالَىٰ إِنَّ رَسُولَ عَلَيْهِ السَّلَامِ إِذَا سَعَلَهُمْ عَمْ مُدَبِّرِي هَذِهِ الْأَحْوَالِ فَسَيَقُولُونَ إِنَّهُ اللَّهَ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَىٰ He says, Allah made clear that if the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam were to ask them, يعني, the Quraysh, who controls these matters? They would say that it's Allah. وَهَذِي يَدُلْ عَلَىٰ إِنَّ الْمُخَاطَبِينَ بِهَذَا الْكَلَامِ كَانُوا يَعْرِفُونَ اللَّهِ وَيُكَرُّونَ بِهِ وَهُمْ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا فِي إِبَادَتِهِمْ لِلْأَصْنَامِ إِنَّهَا تُقَرِّبُنَا إِلَى اللَّهِ زُلْفَةً وَإِنَّهُمْ شُفَعَاؤُنَا إِنَّ اللَّهِ وَكَانُوا يَعْلَمُونَ أَنَّ هَذِي الْأَصْنَامِ لَا تَنْفَعُ وَلَا تَضُرُ وَكَانُوا يَعْلَمُونَ أَنَّ هَذِي الْأَصْنَامِ لَا تَنْفَعُ وَلَا تَضُرُ He then he then says this indicates that those who are addressed with this speech, يعني, the Quraysh, they used to know Allah and affirm Him. They are the ones who said about their worshiping of idols. Indeed, they bring us closer to Allah. Why we worship them? We worship them because they bring us closer to Allah, and they are our intercessors with Allah. And they knew that these idols did not benefit or harm. Muhammad ibn Dohah, la, la. He was 500 years after Razi, or more, Afwan, more, 600 years after. He's the one who's saying here that they know that their idols do not benefit or harm. He then goes on to say, at this point, he said to his Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, so say, so will you not then fear, meaning, so will you not fear making these idols partners with the long worship, even though you admit that all good in this life and the hereafter only occurs from his mercy and his goodness. And you admit, And you admit that these idols do not benefit or harm whatsoever. This is in the 17th volume, 91st page of Tafsir al-Razi. Ibn Kathir, rahimahullah ta'ala, in